this is daily spiritual gossip and i'm coming to you because i want to do a story time about um rest sleep <laughs> um growing up i used to be abused a lot um i used to sleep with a knife and um the reason why I'm doing this story time is because I heard this song this morning. It's uh, Christine Aguilera. It's um, I'm okay. And I was just like listening to it and I start crying. Like I, I have lashes on today. I was trying to, I was trying not these lashes, but anyway, um, and I did them myself. I'm so proud anyway. So, um, I heard the song and it was like, I'm okay. And she was like, bruises fade father, but the pain remains the same. And, um, I remember I still remember how you kept me so afraid and I was thinking that because I realized that um, for the first time in my life I don't sleep with a knife and the reason why I'm saying that is because growing up um, I had an older brother that used to come in my room and abuse me so um, I used to always sleep with a knife and then growing up in the neighborhood that I'm from um, in San Francisco, I'm from Hunters Point. It was really violent and, and vicious growing up, especially in the 90s. We had a lot of drugs and gangs and stuff like that. We always hear gunshots. So it was like my protection. So then when um, I got older and I was in school and I had a roommate, um, we had our we had a two bedroom. So I still slept with my knife. And um, at the time, you know, I had ended up having a boyfriend and he ended up becoming my husband but um <clears throat> when he first started dating and he started to actually spend a night he was like why do you sleep with a knife under your pillow and I never really told him that you know I'm a victim of you know abuse like that and why I was so afraid because growing up I was so afraid to go to sleep and I really didn't like being by myself because I was the only girl and I had four brothers and my older brother was just like a sick old pervert like he would abuse us especially me being the only girl and don't believe that crap when they tell you, oh, go to help, go get some help and tell people. A lot of times when you do, they don't help you, especially being a little black girl. They don't really care about your abuse. I'm just telling you that from firsthand. They don't care. Especially if the person you're accusing, I'm sorry, is a black man or black boy or if he has potential. Like they thought he was going to the NFL. So he was more important than my abuse. So anyway... Um, when I was 14, he, um, cause he had went off to college and he came back to visit and, um, he decided that he was going to try it again, um, and pick up where the abuse left off when he left. But what he didn't know is I started sleeping with a knife. So when he came in my room that night, I was asleep and I woke up with him on me trying to abuse me. So I put that knife to his throat and I told him, I will cut your throat. Get the hell out of my room. I saw my own abuse with that knife. And um, I told my parents. Of course, they didn't care. But um, my father even uh, blamed me for it. That's how sick they are in our community. Uh, anyway. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I stopped my abuse with that knife. And then um, I kept it. I kept sleeping with a knife the whole entire time. And then when I had my son, um, my husband at the time... Uh, former husband now we were staying with his parents for a little while and um we had got a place together because we needed to save money i wasn't working and i was trying to go back to work but he was trying to keep me from working it was an abuse tactic it was to control me and um i'm learning that now but um so anyway so uh, <laughs> so he um we were in the room and I was holding my son and he was getting mad because his father is like Mr. from the color purple, right? So if I used to tell him he should be kicking my ass and da 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 you know, like he should be controlling me. So my husband at the time decided that he was going to take his father's advice. And we were in the room and we were arguing about finances because I wanted to leave. I didn't want to live under other people and deal with these demonic ass people because his parents are really demonic. And, um, so he goes and he gets mad and he punches me holding his son and I'm looking at him like, so anyway, 
I'm sorry, I'm in a parking lot I'm at my apartment, but I'm I'm getting ready to get out. But <laughs> so he looks at me and he stepped back after he punched me like like yeah, like he did something. And I remembered I sleep with a knife. I put my son down. I reached under that pillow and grabbed that knife and swung at him. You know, I nicked him a little bit right here. But he act like I just cut his whole life up. And so he go running out the room to his parents, to his daddy, of course, and was like, she stabbed me. She stabbed me, screaming and hollering. And I'm looking at him like, and his dad get up with his cane. You know, the old bastard. I can't stand his dad anyway. Oh, abusive piece of crap. And he, you know, he was telling him telling before, you should be kicking my ass, keeping me in check, right? This same old bastard, mister, his dad was like, call the police, call the police. Now, mind you, you the same one that, that pumped your son up to abuse women because you was abusing his mom his whole life. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so oh, five, five, five five o'clock. So, he was like, Call the police, call the police. And I'm looking like, it's funny now, but at the time it wasn't. I picked my son up and just walked out. Like, y'all crazy. Anyway, so I, I look at it now and I realize I don't have to sleep with that knife no more. Me and my children, we have our, I have my own place. I'm not around none of these people. And I get to rest at night. I'm okay. That's my story time. Like, literally, I realized when I heard that song that I'm okay. I don't have to sleep with a knife. I don't hear gunshots. I mean, you hear the helicopters and stuff. You know, they flying up. And, but that's, you know, normal. You know what I'm saying? Because I stay by a hospital. So, <laughs> I'm saying, I, I'm okay. I can literally lay down at night and not worry. I don't have to sleep with that knife no more. And I have been doing it for so many years that I literally, it just, it's second nature of just being afraid at night or, you know, worried about who's going to attack you and not being able to sleep peacefully. And I'm in my 40s, now I'm 44, and I'm finally understanding what sleeping peacefully is. Like being able to get a good night rest. And I'm just, I'm so grateful to the most high i'm just so grateful to finally understand what that feels like just to be able to sleep and not have to sleep with a knife and i'm just grateful so when i heard that song this morning it just i started crying you know i got my little lashes so i'm trying to I'm trying it out because i brought a whole box of lashes you know miss paris hilton i love paris hilton i love i don't know people I love her stuff. I don't care what nobody say. But anyway, um, I brought a whole thing of her lashes and I was putting them on. I'm trying them on, you know, because I'm practicing. Uh, <laughs> I just was sitting there crying in the car and I'm saying, wow, I'm okay because I finally realized that. So, I don't know, 8.08 <laughs> on the clock. I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm absolutely grateful to the point now I can even laugh about it because the pain, I've healed I've healed and I'm okay and I don't have to sleep with a weapon thank you the most high thank you thank you thank you thank you and always always give honor and praise to my ancestors thank you have a good morning this is daily spiritual gossip and this is my story time about I'm okay <laughs>